solving quadratic equations using the zero product property is a second strategy that we have for solving quadratic equations. We have previously solved quadratics using square roots. And this strategy of solving using square roots is a great strategy when we have an x squared or an expression squared in our equation. However, the strategy does not work when we have a linear or an x term in our equation. So this is an example of an equation we cannot solve using square roots. x squared plus 11x plus 24 equals 0. We could subtract 24, but we don't know how to take the square root of x squared plus 11x. So we're going to solve this equation using the zero product property. The zero product property states that if a times b equals 0, then a equals 0 or b equals 0. So for multiplying two factors, a and b, if their product is 0, then at least one of those factors must equal 0. An important part of this property is making sure that in fact we are looking at an equation that equals 0. So in order to use the zero product property to say that one of the factors is 0, the equation itself must equal 0. And that is a requirement that has been met in this equation. If we did not have equal 0 on one side of our equation, we would need to transform it so that we did have equals 0. Now we're going to solve this equation using the zero product property. The first step of this is to write the left-hand side in factored form. Writing this left-hand side in factored form is just what we did in our polynomial unit, looking for the factors that multiply together to give us x squared plus 11x plus 24. In order to do that, we need to find those two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11. Many of you can find those two numbers without the diamond at this point, and that's fine. But if you find the diamond helpful, awesome. The two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11 are, yes, 8 and 3. So 8 times 3 is 24, and 8 plus 3 is, in fact, 11. So now I'm going to write this left-hand side in factored form, meaning x plus 8 times x plus 3. Factored form, meaning if I were to multiply x plus 8 times x plus 3, using that distributive property, that would simplify to x squared plus 11x plus 24. Now the left-hand side is in factored form, but I need to not forget to write equals 0, because that is the equation that I'm solving. I've factored the left-hand side expression in order to solve this equation. Since I have equal zero in my equation, this is where the zero product property comes in. If this factor, x plus eight, times this factor, x plus three, equals zero, then either the factor x plus eight equals zero or the factor x plus three equals zero. The zero product property, which I call the ZPP, allows me to write two equations, setting each factor equal to zero. So either x plus 8 equals 0 or x plus 3 equals 0. I then need to solve each equation. x plus 8 equals 0 is an awesome one-step equation. When I subtract 8 from both sides, I get my first solution. x equals negative 8. Using inverse operations to x plus 3 equals 0, I get my second solution. x equals negative 3. My two solutions to the equation x squared plus 11x plus 24 equals 0 are x equals negative 8 and x equals negative 3. I can verify that that's the case by plugging the value of x back into the equation and make sure, making sure that I get a true statement. So does negative 8 squared plus 11 times negative 8 plus 24 equals 0? I sure hope so. So negative 8 times negative 8 is 64. 11 times negative 8 is negative 88. Does 64 plus negative 8, 88 plus 24 equals 0? Mm -hmm. 64 minus 88, negative 24, yes! Negative 4 plus 24 does equal 0. So what I've done here is verified that negative 8 is in fact a solution to this equation. 
If I plug negative 3 in, I am similarly able to verify that negative 3 is a solution. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 11 times negative 3 is negative 33. And 9 plus negative 33 is negative 24. So does negative 24 plus 24 equal 0? Yep. So x equals negative 3 is my second solution to this equation.